This is a 66 Sylvania. Run into your safe place. On the velocity, we still have a very strong signature, guys. There is a tornado on the ground, toward, tearing through this Tennessee landscape as it approaches. The so this is, I'm suspecting a dead CRT. I've worked on this uh, set before. So we got a new CRT. I found one. It's been shipped in. We're going to open it here and hope it made it. It's going to need the cataract done on the new, the new, 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 new old stock CRT because it's in really bad shape. But yeah, this is how bad the picture is on this. I mean, look at the definition in this guy's face. All the smearing. No red. The red gun is just like toast in this thing. That this is turning the tint or hue. shelter right now in Humboldt, Tennessee, because this is about 15 minutes or so away from you and rapidly approaching. Look at the debris. We clearly had that once it made it through uh, Covington, and you can see, look at it, smashing through the south side of Covington. That's getting rid of the color. So you can see all the distortion and overloading is in the color. On its way to Humboldt, so please Treat this very seriously. This tornado warning is not one to be messed with. It has had a history of producing extensive damage, and already we're getting reports of a death in Wynn, Arkansas. All right, so there's a look at this tornado cell. I want to bring this one up. Turn the color back up. It has shown signs of concern. We're starting to get some tighter couplet there, and this is... And wake up feeling refreshed. You know, actually, man, has been a miracle for us. So look at the I mean, smearing you know, to the right. The change that it had in our lives unbelievable stop being afraid of scary health issues see the start sleeping your fears away with shadow the smearing your body and your mind well thank you relaxium sleep is so confident that it will work for you they're giving away 1000 see that call 800 306 8190 or go to try relax so let's try open the crt and see if it made it i really like the packaging the seller used and we know that UPS does not look at labeling, but this is about the clearest labeling you could put. You know, fragile, top, glass. So let's see if it made it. I'm going to crack it open. And yes, you can find, you can still find CRTs. Of course, there's no one rebuilding them. And, um, but you can still find new old stock rebuilds. It's just you have to pony up the cash. And shipping is not cheap. Shipping on this, I think, was 140 something like that. It's expensive. All right. Double boxed. Nice, very nice. Professionally packed. This is what you want to see. I mean, this is done right here. Important, remove and insert tube from other end. Really? Do I? I don't, I don't pay attention to rules. So like I said, we have to do the cataract surgery on this because I was told by the seller that it was coming apart. So this is ground high voltage before touching. Caution, wear safety goggles with side shields. When working on handling tube to prevent possible injury from flying glass. I take that seriously because I only have one set of eyes and they are not yet replaceable. So I don't screw around. I don't screw around with um, possibility of a uh, picture tube breaking. Mainly when I'm doing cataract. That's about the only time. But yeah, it, it, it is not... It is not worth the risk. Well, this is kind of interesting. And this is a colorama, which is not ideal, but um, this is interesting. And I'm not going to read this, but the most, all of it, the most recent RCA rectangular picture tubes contain a new rare earth red phosphor. 
that was mined at the Mountain Pass mine out near Vegas. I know that. Uh, in conjunction with improved sulfide blue and green phosphors, resulting in increased light. Okay, so this, it talks about you have to, might have to change something here. I'm not going to read this whole thing. And then it goes into the 23 EGP replacement. Interesting. Interesting stuff. So let's, let's look at the front of this because, like I said, the seller said that the, the, the agent, the bonding agent turned into like jelly and was running out, leaking all over the place. Oh, wow. Look at the cataract on this thing. And yeah, it is. It's like all nasty. But look at this. This should just fall right off, but we have to use safety PPE while working on this. Some other well-known uh, uh, vintage television guy had one of these implode on him, and it's very violent, and it sprays glass all over the place. You know, I always wondered on these tubes, see this right here? This white, this is glue. I wonder when that seal is going to start to break down on these and they'll leak. And check this out. You can see the staining in the box where the, the I want to call it potting material, but it's bonding agent was, was leaking into the cardboard. So... One year warranty, that kind of gives you an idea that it's not that great. This tube contains a new electron gun and used materials which prior to reuse were carefully inspected to meet our high quality standards. And then here's your installation sheet here. And uh, yeah, only a year warranty, you know, that's pretty pitiful. Rare earth, new gun. So, we won't, I uh, wonder if this is the date, 7648. We're not going to use this TV a whole lot. We just want to resurrect it and make it produce a good picture. Before we do anything, let's do a comparative test on the CRT we're going to be replacing in the Sylvania set. And this is the original tube. At least it looks like it. I mean, it's serialized and matches the set. And we'll compare that to using the 467, which I like this tester for stuff like this. We'll compare it to the uh, Colorama. What's interesting, this was pointed out by another collector. This has a one-year warranty. The Sylvania tubes had a five-year warranty. So we kind of know that the Colorama is, yeah, it's kind of second class. So we'll test this at 6.3 to start. We'll go right on 6.3, 50 volts there. Uh, let's see, set cutoff. I don't think, well, we do have some cutoff there. Green has some something, and blue just did something. Oh yeah, we have a bad connection here. Let's see. So we'll come down here. You're supposed to go up one, one little notch. So red on this red on this tube is just gone. It's just red, green, blue. All right. We'll go to the colorama. 
on the colorama now and we'll do cut off got a little reflection here uh, of course look at this this thing just pegs all of them well it's not as good as that one that was in the Packard Bell the one in the Packard Bell was they were all even this this they're not they're not even let me floor post scroplicate this and yeah they're not even red is weaker on this one so let's set it I mean, they're close, but. So that's what, the, that's what a new Colorama looks like. All right, on to the cataract surgery. Actually, before we do that, Let's go down to 4.7 volts on this. Go to 4.7 volts. Uh, now on the Packard Bell, when the Packard Bell was new, there wasn't much drop off. And there's not much, not a whole lot of drop off here. There is some. Um, this this is just not as good as a, an original equipment, new old stock CRT. It's not. Look at the unevenness here. Here's the original CRT at 4.7 volts that's with the cut off all the way up so yeah the red gun in this is just dead I'm still not a hundred percent certain that there isn't something wrong with this chassis but in a previous video I had it on the jig and it seemed to perform okay there's not a lot to this it's pretty simple not to say that I didn't miss something but it's pretty simple. So let's do the cataract surgery on this. Get it, I'm going to get it upside down in a trash can and get all my safety gear on because, like I said, I, I think I'd rather get shot than have pieces of glass stuck in my eyes. The rectangular ones are far more dangerous than the round CRTs. You really don't have to be as cautious with the round CRTs because the pressure is even all the way around. This, the pressure is not even all the way around. In later years, what they did is they didn't put the safety glass, they banded them. They put a metal strap around the outside. And I believe the theory was there that in order for it to implode, it would have to expand around the outside and the metal strap would prevent that anyway I don't think it's going to take much to get this off oh boy maybe it is probably going to have to use some heat right here yeah I was thinking this was crap all the way through kind of nice they put that on there to keep it from getting scratched isn't it so first get the tape off the outside here um, I need to get this tape off it's slippery because it's all oily and then what we're I'm gonna leave it sit in the Sun for a while uh, I, I really want to try and minimize you know, this is horrid. The, 
the heating of it because I'm gonna have to heat this with a heat gun and just let it sit here in the Sun for probably for three hours I got another little Xena set I can do an analysis video on while this is sort of waiting and uh, just take your time if you're doing one of these just take your time there's no rush I mean that would it would be an absolute felony to destroy a brand new rebuilt one-year warranty RCA Colorama tube all right I have a face shield glasses on face shield helmet and glasses on so and I'm completely covered with no exposed skin so if it pops it pops It's been sitting in the sun for several hours, but it's not super hot because we're still in winter. I mean, it's... You know what, this is not working. Um, this is not working, it's making me very nervous. I need to, I need to take a break and revisit this because that should have, you should have started to see fingers move in towards the middle by now. And we haven't, and that's definitely the RCA style. So this is not the one you cut off with the hot wire. It's making me a little bit nervous. How many minutes into this am I? Because I might, I might edit this down. Um, I can't, I can't see the camera, but 11 minutes. Yeah, I'm not 11 minutes and 40 seconds. I, uh, I'm, I'm creeped out right now. I need to take a break. I need to revisit this. I, I feel like it's going to pop. I'm applying too much heat in one spot with nothing happening. So it's creepy. I smell something rotting over here. There's something that's dead and rotting. Holy crap. This is rainwater that's accumulated. Look at the little scoily, mosquito scoily spoilers in here. There's thousands of them. Anyway, random cutaway clip. Yeah, there's those little zigzag thingies. But there's something, yeah. I've really done a whole lot of these. I mean, because look, look at, I've done a whole lot of these uh, cataract removals and when you start doing one and something just doesn't feel right um, you got to back down and uh, I, I'm sort of backing down on this right now I think what I want to do is I want to try and get some chopsticks in here
because the the penalty for for failure here is not only a destroyed zero hour rebuilt CRT but it's also person you know uh, possible possible personal harm and I don't I'm not I'm not into glass sorry I think what I'm gonna do you can see all this stuff is just loose it's really just in the middle I'm gonna get this out on all four sides I'm going to try and get some pieces of chopsticks, so let me do that. Second attempt. There we go. See it? See the finger? There are the fingers. See them? Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Woo. Boy, that's an odor that Febreze could work on. Jeez, talk about toilet odors that linger. Holy crap. All right, this is hot, and I got to find somewhere safe to set it down. This is horrible. Need to get a blade and clean that up. Next step is to clean this all up very, very well because anything that is left over will get sealed in between the safety glass and the front of the CRT when we put it back together. And you don't want that because I'm going to silicone it. So we got to get this like spotless. What's good is, is it's been raining here, so there's not a lot of dust and there's no wind right now. So I'm kind of in a hurry to get this done as soon as possible. So I'm going to work on this. I'm letting the CRT cool down so I can windex it and get it perfectly clean. Letting everything kind of cool down and restabilize and not be hot spots. So... 
if anybody wants a piece of this to sniff, let me know because it's uh, definitely pungent chemically. got to be absolutely clean and all that oily crap has to be off of it because um, I'm gonna silicone it back on and yeah it probably there's a beef smudge right here what is this why is there this going on here there is some kind of discoloration to this, and I, not discoloration, but abnormality to the glass. And it runs, it's nothing I did, it runs right here, right here, and then over here. Um, anyway, I'm putting four little pieces of double stick tape, then what I'll do is set the, uh, the front down on it and we'll silicone around it. What I used was black silicone one. This is the stuff that stinks that you do not want to use on transformers. And um, I just hope that the the tabs are behind the um, the mask on the front of the bezel, which I think they will be, but there you go. There it is, silicone. What I do is I just slowly force it in so the silicone's in about, I don't know, three or four millimeters all the way around. Just inside between the two pieces of glass. Is it as good as it was new? No, but I'm not going to throw a football at it. So I decided I'm going to break this video into two parts. I don't usually like to do that, but... I want to let this dry overnight and this video has kind of run on long enough so this is the RCA style that you remove with heat this is the with the yellow ring the yellowish this is the Zenith Sylvania style that you have to remove with a hot wire now that CRT is trash but I'm just saying that style cataract that style bonding agent is the other one so I'm gonna break this off into part one and then we'll do part two where we put the CRT in and I, I actually like I like that look that color better than this color I don't know why but um, that just has more of a classic look to me but we'll get this installed in part two and get it all set up and, and hopefully it produces a nice picture you could really see in the sun that that whatever it was in the glass it's very bizarre let me put it in the sun and see if we can see it I don't know if it's going to show up in the camera but basically it's this area here and then over here not quite sure what that is that was in the the front of the CRT and then it's over here too so it's like a discoloration or something I don't think we're going to see it but it's definitely I hope it's not the I don't think it was the in the phosphor it was on the front side it was like a almost an etched glass in the front side you'd probably never see it with the bonding agent anyway I'll let it dry overnight We'll install it tomorrow, part two. I loaded this thing into a friend's Subaru Forester to get it to the shop. And this is the absolute worst car I think I've ever driven. It's no wonder why everybody that drives a Subaru sucks on a vape pin and has a man bun. And the bearing noise, I mean, I'm going 40, the bearing noise, it's either bearing noise or road noise. It's horrifyingly loud. It's like, it'd be 110 dB at 80 miles an hour. This thing is horrible. This car is freaking horrible. 
The rough ride sure would make an anal plug enjoyable, though. I mean, this this is just... Sorry, not a fan. I'd rather have a Chevrolet product. GM product. But hey...